Hi, my name is Farron Cassidy and I'm a second year PhD student at Queen Mary University of London. My supervisor is Dr. Marika Haralambis and we work at the Centre for Endocrinology. My project focuses on the role of DLK1 in prenatal adipose tissue formation and I regularly use immunohistochemistry in my research. Immunohistochemistry is a technique which allows for the detection of protein expression and the localization of that expression within a tissue. This video will take you through the procedures associated with the immunohistochemistry protocol from tissue sectioning and mounting, to clearing and rehydration of the sections, antigen retrieval, inhibition of the endogenous peroxidase, blocking, antibody staining, signal amplification, counter staining, and finally, imaging. A microtome is used to cut tissue that has been embedded in paraffin wax. I cut my sections at seven microns thick, the sections are placed on glass slides that have had water pipetted onto them. The slides are heated on a hot plate. The slides are left on the hot plate until the water has dried and the sections are attached to the slide. After the slides have been drying for at least overnight, you can begin the immunohistochemistry staining procedure. Before starting the protocol, ensure that you label one of the slides as the no primary antibody control. We begin the procedure by clearing the paraffin from the sections by placing the slides in histoclear. All washes in this protocol are done using glass cuvettes and a slide rack. After two histoclear washes, we then begin an ethanol hydration series, going from 100% ethanol down to water through a series of washes. The next step is antigen retrieval. For this, we use boiling sodium citrate. So after your final PBS wash, you can move the slides into a container of boiling sodium citrate. We do this three times, after the third sodium citrate wash, the slides get washed again in PBS buffer twice for five minutes each. The next step is to quench the endogenous peroxidase. To do this, remove the slides from the PBS and dry them on the back and the sides, ensuring not to damage the tissue on the front. After this, place them in an immunostaining tray. The tray should have some damp tissue in the bottom of it to prevent the slides from dehydrating during the protocol. We then pipette on the hydrogen peroxide solution. After the slides have been incubating in hydrogen peroxide for 30 minutes to one hour, they can be washed twice again in PBS for five minutes each. The next step is the blocking step. Before using antibodies to detect proteins by immunohistochemistry, the tissue sample should be blocked to prevent the non-specific binding of the antibodies. Otherwise, the antibodies or other detection reagents may bind to other epitopes on the sample, independent of specificity. I use the indirect method, where the primary antibody is an IgG molecule made in rabbits that recognises DLK1 protein as its antigen. We then use an anti-rabbit secondary antibody. The secondary antibody is biotinylated and the signal is amplified by adding avatin-biotin complex. After the blocking step is the primary antibody step. For this, firstly, put aside your no primary antibody control, as you won't be adding primary antibody solution to this slide. Then, tip off the excess block from your other slides and dry the back and edges. Do not wash the slides at this stage. Next, pipette on your primary antibody solution. This is made up by adding your primary antibody to the blocking solution from previous. Then, cover the slides in parafilm and leave overnight. After the primary antibody has incubated overnight, we wash the slides and then add the biotinylated secondary antibody. You must match the species of your secondary antibody to the primary antibody. After the secondary antibody incubation, the slides are again washed in PBS. We then dry the back and sides of the slides as done previously and place them back in the immunostaining tray. The next step is signal amplification, and for this we use the avatin-biotin complex, or ABC, solution. To make up this solution, you add both solution A and solution B to some PBS. Pipette on the ABC solution. We can leave this for one hour. The next step is the addition of the substrate. For this, we again rinse the slides in PBS twice for five minutes. We then dry the back and sides and pipette on the dab solution. Watch the slides carefully after you pipette the dab solution on. The tissue should start to turn brown. Dab is extremely toxic, so take care whilst using it and treat any lab equipment with bleach afterwards. Once you see brown staining appear, 
output the slides in PBS. For the counter stain, we use hematoxylin. The slides are stained in hematoxylin for three minutes. Next, they are placed in water. They are then kept under running tap water for five minutes. During this time, the hematoxylin turns from red to greyish blue. After the slides have been soaking in running tap water for five minutes, begin an ethanol dehydration series followed by two Histoclear washes. After the Histoclear washes, the slides are mounted by putting three drops of DPX onto the slide and then covering with a cover slip. Use DPX in the fume hood. Once the slides have been left overnight to dry, they can be viewed using a microscope. Here you can see the negative control, which has no brown staining, as it had no primary antibody added to it. Next to it, you can see the experimental slide, which does have brown staining in the places that DLK1 is expressed. Both slides have blue staining from the hematoxylin counter stain. To summarise, this immunohistochemistry video has demonstrated the following techniques. Tissue sectioning and mounting, clearing and rehydration of the slides, antigen retrieval, inhibition of the endogenous peroxidase, blocking, antibody staining, signal amplification, counter staining and imaging of the slides. I hope this video has helped you to better understand the immunohistochemistry protocol.